the affordable housing challenge um, for families is families do have jobs. They do have an income. They do have a way to pay rent, but they just can't find a place that's affordable for them to do that. I work with homeless individuals in Rock County, and I can tell you, um, the people that we work with every single day, they find themselves in a situation where they've lost their housing. And they would want the community to understand it's not because they're not trying, it's not because they're not working. Many of them are working one and two jobs, but they are not able to earn enough money to be able to afford the cost of living in our community. Um, rents have increased in some communities or some neighborhoods in our community, rents have increased as much as 30 percent. We have families in this community that are living in local motels um, with the cost of a weekly stay in a motel being $300 or more. These are folks that aren't able to save enough money for a security deposit or first month's rent. We have many landlords in our community that are requiring individuals to even consider them to pay double security deposit, first and last month's rent. One experience that I can demonstrate, I can give an example of a family that I worked with. Um, mom was employed, dad was disabled. They were in and out of homelessness. They were in and out of shelters. They were in and out of motels. They stayed with relatives in other communities during the summer. Um, and eventually they ended up living in their car. Um, they were saving money for a mobile home because they couldn't find anyone to rent to them. Dad um, had a felony on his record and no one would rent to him for that. And their, rec their rent record er, wasn't good. So they saved money to buy a mobile home while living in their car. The car broke down so they had to buy a newer car, so the money they were going to use for the mobile home now went to a newer car. So how we helped that family is I worked with um, the county, the Children and Family Services, and set them up with a caseworker. They were able to get them into a supportive housing program. Um, they're still considered homeless because they're not paying the rent. The county is actually paying the rent for them and I continue to help them with services through the school district. They're making ends meet with a little help from me with gas cards, um, but they struggled and right now they're doing okay. So affordable housing by definition is when the total cost of housing is less than 30% of the total gross household income. In our community and nationally, the cost of housing is rising at unprecedented levels, resulting in extreme difficulty for those in lower income brackets to secure housing. The City of Janesville administers a Housing Choice Voucher Program, which is commonly referred to as Section 8. A Section 8 voucher holder is required to pay 30% of their income towards rent, and the City of Janesville pays the difference directly to the landlord. So through programs through the state, like the Wisconsin Emergency Rental Assistance Program, we have a new program called Wisconsin Help for Homeowners. Those are both uh, through the state, activated by Community Action, so Community Action Inc. of Rock and Walworth Counties. We operate that in both Rock and Walworth Counties, but it is coming from the state. Um, those are programs where we're helping both the landlords and the tenants because we want people to be able to stay in their homes and we want the landlords to be able to have that income from rent because we understand that, you know, for some landlords, the, the rental property, that's their business and they need to be able to have the money from their business to be able to pay their mortgage and for other expenses. So we want to make sure that, you know, people are safely housed and that uh, the landlords are being able to get their rental income. It's really a matter of supply and demand. You know, in our community, we just don't have enough housing stock to meet the demand in our community. There are so many individuals, families with small children who are rent burdened, which that means those families are paying more than 30% of their income for their housing. And then the added dynamic of those that are very low income who are severely cost burdened when it comes to rent. Those people are paying more than 50% of their disposable income just to stay housed. 
when we think about what that means for our community, especially given the COVID-19 pandemic, we are seeing more individuals and families than we ever have before that are struggling in so many ways. These folks are having to decide, do I pay my rent? Um, do I forego childcare? Do I go without food? Um, do I pay my utilities? Um, they're constantly in this mode of robbing Peter to pay Paul um, just in order to keep their head above the ground. So there's kind of a simple concept that we adhere to, and that is that every person deserves a safe place to live. You know, regardless of what they've done, who they are, everybody deserves a safe place to live. But how we get there can be a little more complicated. There aren't really any easy answers for how do we find affordable housing? How do we fix the problems that we're having right now in Rock County? Because it seems like this has been going on for a while and then the pandemic just kind of uh, complicated things. It, it made it worse for people who are looking for affordable housing. And so with today's market, you have people who are looking for an apartment and they are being told that in order to get the apartment, they have to prove that their income is three times the amount of rent for the apartment. With the levels of rent right now, landlords are able to charge more for rent because there's higher demand. And so it is really hard for low-income families to prove that they have three times the income for the amount of rent. We have one client that I wanted to share a little bit about that we've been working with. Um, so I've been here for 17 years and I've known this client for many years. And off and on, he's always been um, homeless, having issues finding um, apartments. Um, African American gentleman has a disability, many medical um, problems that have increased over the years, um, and currently is um, at a, an assisted living center right now because of his medical issues. But he has, um, luckily, we've been able to help him with case management and housing before he went into that assisted living facility, and we were able to actually get him a Section 8 voucher. But because of his limited income, many years of periodic um, homelessness in between housing, um, he can't find an apartment, even though he has a Section 8 voucher that will assist him. And I think he's had two evictions on his records that have been more than seven years ago, but nobody is wanting to work with him. Um, and even those that are willing to work with him, they're over the amount that his voucher is able to um, cover. So it's very hard right now, even if you have programs that are willing to help you with your rent, um, especially if you have past evictions, very low income. It's his income right now is about $600 a month. It's very hard to find any housing units. COVID-19 created a situation where we had already had a homeless epidemic, and now we had a pandemic on top of an epidemic. So for those individuals that were already struggling, trying to figure out the fastest way to become rehoused, oftentimes found themselves in homeless shelters and motels, um, or doubling and tripling up in some cases. And all of a sudden, now they're dealing with a situation where um, there might be some job insecurity. Um, they're having to figure out how to quarantine, how to keep themselves safe. Issues with child care centers closing, having to convert to virtual schooling. Um, and so just multiple issues that created additional stressors for folks that were already dealing with stress. We see an increase in our students experiencing homelessness, which can lead to poor attendance which can lead to missing assignments, which is hard for teachers to get kids caught back up in class when they're not in their seat most of the time. We find that a lot of our students are um, transient and they move around a lot. I've had some students in classes, this is their third school in the school year. So every time a student moves um, from school to school, they fall behind academically at least four to six months. Families find stability in school um, when they're experiencing homelessness because we try to keep them in their school of origin. So a lot of shelters, community agencies now have money for motel vouchers. So I have a lot of students living in motels currently. The problem is Janesville, if the motels are full, 
then the students are in other motels. So right now I have students living in Lake Geneva, Elkhorn, Delavan, Whitewater, Beloit in hotels. For stability reasons, we keep those students in their school. So it's my job to provide transportation to figure out how to get the kids from Lake Geneva to Janesville every day. And we do that through gas cards for the parents or um, bus passes for students maybe living in Beloit. And then we have private drivers in our district that will actually drive students from other communities to school every day. Due to lack of affordable housing, we're seeing an increase in the homeless population here in Rock County. This means community resources are being used more frequently to house um, temporary, temporarily at motels. For many years here at Echo, we've provided about 4,000 nights in a local motel, um, but in 2021, we provided over 9,000 nights in um, local motels because of the lack of housing available here in our community. When families cannot afford to pay rent, it creates a domino effect in the workforce, educational system, healthcare system, and our social services community. And without the construction of new affordable housing in our community, the crisis will continue to be more critical for coworkers, classmates, neighbors, families, and friends. You know, in the Rock County area, we have um, an increase in homelessness like we've never seen before. You know, on any given night, three to 400 individuals are on various waiting lists for housing. For those of us that are working in the homeless response field, um, it can be very challenging sometimes to stay motivated. But I remind myself every single day when I think about the four to 500 kids in Rock County um, that are either in a homeless shelter, they're in a motel, um, or they're doubling and tripling up, that they need us to continue to do this work despite the difficulties that come along with it. And so for me, the motivating factor is making sure that I'm using every opportunity that I have to make sure that the voices and the needs of our most vulnerable citizens are heard.